this is a full review of a 2024 Crosstrek. So welcome everybody. This again is the 2024 Crosstrek Onyx that I had featured in another video from a couple of days ago. So uh, as a general overview of the Crosstrek, the Subaru Crosstrek, uh, the Subaru Crosstrek is the smallest SUV in the Subaru lineup. It's a subcompact SUV. The nice thing with Subaru is that uh, even in, in a subcompact SUV, they do not miniaturize the ground clearance, they don't make the wheels smaller. So this car has the same ground clearance as our larger Outback and Forester. And it also has the same size wheels, so the same uh, width and overall diameter as uh, its larger cousins, the uh, Forester and the Outback. So that's really nice. Um, so same sort of meat and potato as the other larger SUVs with a smaller cabin, uh, making it nice and light and probably more maneuverable than, than the other SUVs in the lineup, uh, especially the Outback. Uh, this car can do uh, light off-roading without a problem. And the Crosstrek uh, is, uh, can also tow. It can tow up to 1,500 pounds. And one thing that was upgraded for this 2024 generation, this again is a new generation from the previous one, uh, from the 2023 and before, even though they look quite similar. Um, the towing has improved. So the towing capacity itself is the same at 1,500 pounds, but the tongue weight uh, has tripled. I believe it's something like 450 pounds now, whereas it used to be something like 150 pounds. So uh, a little bit better there on the towing uh, capabilities. Now, um, I have heard uh, some people ask about this new generation, whether it's got less ground clearance. Uh, I've heard that from a couple of people. Maybe someone said that online somewhere. But according to Subaru, at least Subaru Canada, the car still has the same ground clearance, so still the same 220 millimeters or 8.7 inches of ground clearance. Um, I've turned the car on so you can see the nice headlights as well. These are steering responsive LED headlights that became standard now. Um, so they will swivel from side to side with the movement of the steering wheel. That's a standard feature now, even on the base model, which is really nice to see. The fog lights are also LEDs. Um, this car just came to our dealership, so it still has the plastics there. It's hard to see because the, the car is white, but it does have the plastics. Some of the plastics have been removed from the inside, and, and I'm sure um, you're gunning to see the inside, and uh, I'll show you that in just a sec. Uh, let's just go to the trunk before we go over the rest of the interior. Um, so a redesigned uh, little plastic piece right here. Otherwise, it's the same volume in the uh, cargo area. The tonneau cover design was improved, putting the handle here rather than having to grip uh, right here on the side. Uh, other than that, uh, Subaru put a couple of little cup holders, I guess, or just divots right there. Um, that's, I guess, if you're doing some tailgating, some picnics, uh, barbecuing, you can, you can use that to put some extra stuff in there. And underneath here, where the spare tire is, you can see a couple of cutouts as well for tools or whatever have you. So that's the back. Now we'll show the back seats. So we peeled off some of the plastics and let me peel them off a bit more. I think this should give you uh, quite a good look now and uh, I'll pan back out, I'll zoom back out. So this is the space in the Crosstrek. I believe it's the exact same legroom as before. Again, the volume inside really hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. And here's a zoom on the uh, cloth seats. And this is what you get in the Onyx. Um, their cloth seats now but they are double layered on the sides and it's a pretty thick material cushioned uh, thick material here on the inside so I hope you guys can see that for everyone that wanted to see the interior and let me show the armrest right here as well ah, there we go so the armrest. This is a very comfortable place to be uh, in. In the back here, uh, and I've, I have quite a few friends with Crosstrex, 
Uh, I've been here in the back, sitting in the back with two uh, six foot plus uh, friends in the front. Uh, we had our ski equipment, snowboard equipment here on the side. Uh, the seats do split 60-40. So we had our equipment on the side and I was just sitting right here and I was very comfortable. Even with the driver's seat brought back a little, there's still plenty of leg room here. And with the armrest, it's just very, very comfortable. I had my doubts at first, but um, after trying it out with a fully loaded car, it's very comfortable. So it's a great family vehicle as well uh, for anyone wondering. Um, now the USBs, the USBs have migrated to the back right there. So that's really convenient uh, for backseat passengers. Overall uh, on the interior, like I said, even though the spacing is not, uh, is not different, uh, Subaru did uh, make improvements to the ergonomics. So the seats do feel more cushioned. They're more comfortable. Uh, the actual backing right here somehow seems a bit wider. So a bit more comfortable. And that's definitely the case uh, for the front. So let me show you that now. So in the front, uh, in the Onyx, they added a, power, added a power seat, which we didn't have before. And this is a, a very much improved power seat because it doesn't just go up and down. You can also tilt tilt the cushion. You can tilt it up or down. Hope you guys can see that, up and down. Or the seat up and down. That's the entire seat, forwards and backwards. That's basic. And you can also change the lumbar support. So for the lower back right here, you can bring that in on or out. Uh, the seat itself, I believe is wider, it feels wider, it looks wider to me, and it's a 10-way power seat now, so that's uh, really nice. So the ergonomics have improved there. Now let's step inside. I think that's uh, that's the part that was missing from my other review. So here we are inside of the Crosstrek. I've even peeled the plastic here from the screen for you guys, so you can see the, the big screen. So this again is new to the 2024. This newer generation gets this large screen. Uh, let me show you the backup camera. So backup camera right here. So that's about the size that uh, we had before uh, when you're comparing it to the, uh, the top of the line uh, cross tracks. Uh, it's still larger than uh, the, uh, the backup camera there is still larger than some of the more basic models that we had um, in the past. So it's a nice, and welcome improvement. On the inside here, nice black gloss. Some people don't like it, I, I love it. I, I don't think it's a hassle to uh, clean or keep clean or anything like that. And it just looks so beautiful and classy. Um, I think Subaru just did a great job here. It's still utilitarian enough where you've got the cup holders here. There's plastics, if something falls, you can take this off and, and, and clean around it. So that's really well done. The 12 volt, migrated here which is wonderful it used to be right there kind of annoying to get to now it's here for any uh 12 volt utilities that you guys have um the parking brake is now digital no more handbrake now it's a digital parking brake so to engage it you press up to disengage have your foot on the brake and press down super easy heated seats are right here uh we still have physical buttons for this how great is that it's not integrated into the screen, at least not for this uh, this year. So that's awesome. So heated seats are individual. Most models, will, mod, most models, sorry, will also get a heated steering wheel. You can see that right here. I believe it heats up the entire thing. Might be wrong there, maybe not the top, but uh, you do get a heated steering wheel. So that's wonderful. Nice and welcome addition. Automatic headlights, of course, that's standard. Uh, Subaru still doesn't have uh, automatic uh, um, uh, rain sensing wipers, but maybe that will come in the future. We do have that on uh, some uh, higher higher trim levels of, uh, of the larger SUVs like the Ascent. Now as for the screen, let's have a look here. Most models will get uh, this screen other than the base model, which will have two smaller seven inch screens. Anything from uh, a level uh, trim level uh, higher than the base so the touring and up in Canada will get a dual zone climate control you can you can change your own temperature and the passenger can change theirs you can see it goes into two levels now going to two sides 
so that's duels on climate control you still have full control of uh of the vents and everything uh the only thing that's a bit of a hassle i guess you could say is if you wanted to change where the air is coming from you do have to click here first and then it pops up with that other menu and you can change here auto or not auto circuit recirculate the air and uh, you can also adjust this individually just like that or you can synchronize it so most of the features you can access from here uh, the idea is that you would keep the climate control on auto and then you really just need to change the temperature up and down the blower speed the car will take care of uh, that adjustment for you as well as where the air is coming from so i still like this screen i tend to not go not have to go in here you're really just changing the the climate controls other than that um, the top of the line will also have built-in navigation um, but uh, with this car you have access to uh, phone controls that's right here radio controls AM, FM, and satellite radio. The sound system is, is very decent. <laughs> Great song. The sound system is really uh, decent. Um, I find that all uh, modern Subarus come with a, a very decent sound system. Um, but of course you can upgrade by going to the top of the line, the Limited with the Harman Kardon sound system or your own system that uh, you can put in here. But again, like I said, for me, it's uh, more than good enough. Uh, different settings in here. Now, the real uh, thing to show here is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, which I don't have uh, currently on me. Let's see if we can actually uh, do this live and, and add a phone here. Back with you now, um, I guess the uh, video disconnected as I was uh, connecting my uh, Bluetooth for Apple CarPlay to show you all. So now I'm connected uh, and let's check out what Apple CarPlay looks like. So it's a wireless system now. Um, Apple CarPlay is now wireless. So it's just a one-time connection. Every time you come into the car, you'll have Apple CarPlay show right here. And you can basically do all of the controls, everything that you could do with the Subaru uh, system, um, you can do from Apple CarPlay, meaning phone calls phone calls music uh, messages whatsapp anything like that uh, youtube music google maps any app that you have audible um, you can uh, you can use it on here so that would work for all messaging apps navigation apps as well as uh, music apps and uh, i'm sure everyone wants to see what google maps looks like so there it is so as you can see a really lovely view uh, Apple Car CarPlay takes about two-thirds of the screen so this screen is just really awesome for navigation I'm very happy with it now it is divided into three sections you have the climate controls at the bottom the main screen and then a multifunction screen here it will show you access to uh, X mode uh, weather data parameters of the car a couple of other things there audio if you want to see what's uh, playing when you have uh, Google Maps for example on the big screen so that's our large screen and we still have the buttons for the um, rear defroster this will do the rear side and uh, front defroster underneath the windshield wipers and this is the main windshield uh, defroster which normally would go on uh, automatically in many cases so being in a Crosstrek it's a very nice place to be we have the new generation eyesight system right here uh, that system can see twice the field of view um, as it did before and it has some extra tricks up its sleeve it can do um, accident avoidance not just by uh, pressing on the brakes if um, if the driver doesn't react in time uh, but it can also use the blind spot monitoring system look each way and then make an evasive maneuver um, in the case of an imminent collision uh, in the case that the driver hasn't put on the brakes on their own and up here we have the lovely sunroof you can tilt or slide it so it's a basic feature or uh, something that we've had before i shouldn't say basic but something that we've had before but this was now added to the onyx trim level which is great we didn't have that in the past on the onyx or the canadian uh, outdoor and 
and this is just a view to the back. And please note the uh, dark headliner. I believe that's only on the Crosstrek Onyx, and I love it. Makes makes it feel like a sports car and keeps it nice and cool, um, or at least I mean, maybe it keeps it hotter. But uh, it uh, feels nice and a little darker and a little more shady in here. And um, yeah, so uh, I'd have to verify uh, about the other trim levels, but at least in the Onyx trim level, that's what it's like. Here's another view of the. Uh, steering wheel the steering wheel was also somewhat changed a little bit uh, super put more controls here so now you have the volume you have these these buttons to go up and down the screen you no longer have them here on the side which was pretty annoying so everything is now on the left side here as far as multimedia controls and this the, and controlling the screen in front there in the dash your cruise controls are right here you do have a sport mode as well as intelligence mode that's uh, the car defaults automatically to intelligence mode, which is just regular driving mode. And then sports mode is for a um, little bit of extra juice, a little more power, the lesser depression of the uh, gas pedal. You can see the stitching here is also not as, uh, it's, not, it's green or yellow, but it's not as pronounced as what we had before in the Crosstrek Outdoor, uh, which is a welcome change. Some people didn't like that before. There's no strange yellow in here or anything like that so just a little bit of yellow on the stitching here on the seats the stitching on the sides here and again that's that i believe will also only be there on this uh, on this particular trim level in the onyx uh, next thing that i wanted to point out is the uh, wireless charger so that's really great just slide a phone down there it begins charging and the uh, usbs have migrated here with a usb-c which is another welcome change which we didn't have before um, other than that, in the Onyx trim level, you also get these nice uh, metal finished uh, pedals for a sporty look. And that's about it. I won't uh, do a driving review because I don't have a, a holster, a place to, uh, or a holder for the phone. Um, I guess I can show this compartment right here. Again, with the yellow stitching. But other than, the, other than that, I can tell you that uh, my driving impressions of the car were great. It's kind of what I expected. Um, what I've expected from the previous generation has transferred onto here. Uh, the engine feels about the same as before. There is a choice of engines uh, for the Crosstrek. We have a 2 liter and a 2.5. The Onyx Unlimited will get the 2.5. And the 2 liter will be in the Touring and the Convenience model, which are the more basic models. One thing to note, if you're in Canada, your limited and onyx with the 2.5 liter liter engine will come directly from japan so they will not be manufactured in the u.s i believe the u.s destin models uh, so if you are from the u.s you'll be getting a vehicle manufactured or at least the final assembly will be done in indiana and that's for your 2.5 liter engine your onyx and limited uh, the two liters will still be made in japan but again if you are buying the crosstrek 2024 in canada all of your trim levels will be coming directly from Gunma, Japan. Um, that's our main Japanese uh, plant. As far as uh, driving the car, again, drives like before, um, nice and smooth, um, really just glides with the CVT. Um, I enjoy it. I do have to say the car feels slightly heavier than the outgoing uh, generation. Um, so maybe slightly more sluggish on the acceleration, but again, just very, very slight. I think many people, um, most people probably won't notice. Um, and another feature that uh, you can see for sure that I've heard about is uh, these cross, uh, sorry, the roof rails right here, not the crossbars, but the roof rails were reinforced. So I believe um, they're heavier duty than before and can hold a bit more weight. They also have a slightly different design from what we had before. So I think that uh, will mark the end of uh, the review. Again, driving impressions, maybe I'll have uh, a time to do that uh, in the future. Uh, but I can tell you that the car drives great, very responsive, very similar to the Crosstrek that we had before. Maybe slightly better insulated. It did feel like you don't hear as much of the outside noise but uh, felt slightly, slightly heavier than, uh, than the outgoing car. Uh, overall, very nice improvements uh, on the inside. I do like this design uh, better. It's uh, more aggressive than the outgoing model, 
so it's a great car to uh, to get if you're on the fence and you know if you can't get the 2023 anymore the uh, previous outgoing model you won't be disappointed with this 2024 uh, you actually get some nice improvements um, like the wireless charger in this trim level and some other things that came uh, to more basic trim levels like the led steering responsive headlights so overall um, it's a nice improvement uh, and yeah so if you're on the fence don't be if you have any questions uh, let me know let me know what else uh, you'd want to see if i missed anything Maybe I'll do some shorter videos um, going over, uh, you know, anything else. Uh, and I might do uh, a video later on of uh, actually driving the car and, uh, and what that's like. All right, all. Have a good day.